Nathan Cox, thanks for joining us around the home. Okay, so I got my kitchen faucet here and it's getting so stiff to turn the neck that I'm afraid I'm gonna break it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, and I even waited till it was nighttime to do this because the light would come in from the daytime and you would be able to see anything. So you guys are welcome. Anyways, this is one of these standard like, you know, pull out sprayer uh, type faucets. This is a Moen. Um, doesn't matter if there's a Moen or Delta, you know, kind of all built the same way. It's really, really stiff. I mean, it's supposed to go all the way over there. As you can see, uh, I feel like I'm getting ready to crack it or something, okay? So there's there's O-rings. There should be O-rings like here and here, and they should have grease on them, but obviously they've, the grease has run out or whatever, and it's making it super stiff to turn. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys how to, to fix that, make it work like new, okay? So first thing first, let's go underneath the sink and turn off those two shutoffs, the hot and cold water for the faucet. Okay, so let's turn on the water, see what happens. A quick drip, and we're good to go. If you're having problems with your shutoff valves, I've got a video, I'll show you guys how to repair those, top part of your screen right now, okay? From here, you're probably gonna only need two different you know, things now. The correct size Allen wrench, and a tube of silicone grease. I'll have a Amazon link in the description down below for this stuff. Um, not only does it help you get the stuff that you need to do the project, but it helps support the channel as well, so please click away. So there's generally, like on the back side of the handle, a little spot for a little set screw for an Allen wrench. And sometimes they have a little cap there, which would take just a small straight screwdriver and pop it off. This one here doesn't feel to have anything there at all. All right, when you think you got one that fits, be careful because you don't want to strip this out because then you're going to really hurt yourself. And because it's facing the opposite direction, it's not facing us. So even though it's typically righty tighty lefty loosey, um, we're, we're not facing the front. So we're actually, to be lefty loosey, we're actually going to go to the right because we're facing the back side. And there could be hard water deposits built up on this. So this may be quite difficult to get done without tearing it up. Um, unfortunately. All right, there we go. That handles off. Okay. Now, typically the way these are designed with the cartridge right here in the middle, this here is actually just a cap. It's screwed on. And a lot of times it's not even screwed on crazy hard because it's really, okay. That's screwed on hard enough but it's really just holding this down in place. There should be O-rings making all the seals. So my point was, is it doesn't have to be like crazy hard to, to, to do this. All right, most of the time these caps are, even though they look like they're metal, a lot of times they're plastic with kind of a metal coating. So when you go to try to break them free, you gotta be careful or you're gonna tear them up pretty easily. I put a couple scratches on this one myself. Now from this point here, you'll see this nut right here, which is holding the cartridge in place. But for what we're doing today, that probably shouldn't need to be addressed. We're just going to want to try to lift this neck up so that we can grease the, uh, the O-rings it seals on. Okay, now as I'm lifting this up, it doesn't really want to go any further because the, the hose for the, uh, the main, you know, for the faucet here seems to be catching it. So I think we should be able to grease this lower one here and then, and then grease, put the grease back on the top of the neck before we set it back down. So I don't think we have to remove it all the way. You can see that there's, there's hard water deposits and rusts and a little bit of everything in here. So let's get rid of that first and then grease it up real good. Okay, I put a bunch of grease on the lower O-ring and the upper O-ring, even though I can't touch it, should ride um, should ride up here. So we're just going to add a bunch of grease up here onto the neck itself. All right, so let's slide it back down and see how much good we've done. Okay, it's better, but it's not quite there yet. Let's get a little more grease on it. And actually, I can see a lot of water deposits up here. So I'm going to just take a butter knife and try to scrape off the excess deposits because I think that's really what's holding it up. All right, now let's see what we got here. 
Oh my goodness, that's like 300% better than what it was. All right, now don't forget, all right, a lot of times there's a little retainer clip that might pop off with the handle. A lot of times it sits up in here, so let's put that in place. Because that's, it's not only a retainer clip, but it works as a washer for that nut that we had on there, okay? All right, now we're just going to carefully, these will cross that real easy. So I want to make sure it's going on straight before I put it back on. I'm not going to use the wrench to put it back on. Like I said, the O-rings create the seal, and this one doesn't even need a seal. Your old style faucets that had a side sprayer, they needed the seal here and here because the water was actually filling up the neck. This one here, all the water is in the hose, so it doesn't even need to be sealed. So this only needs to be snug, okay? All right, I'm going to actually... As better as that is, it's so much better. I'm gonna put a little more grease in it before I decide to call it a night. I'm also gonna add some grease to the washer itself to make sure it's not grinding on that. I want this to move smooth. Okay, let's give it a, oh my goodness. That might even be better than brand new. That moves very smooth. I'm glad I took it back apart, added a little more grease, and even greased up that, that washer, uh, you know, fitting a bushing right here that every bit of that is, is made a huge difference. And now the faucet works well, I don't get mad at it, and I don't feel like it's gonna crack the next time I use it. So obviously we gotta put the handle back on and turn the water back on, but then we're done. And there we go. Oh, it's a little bit of blackness there. That's from the washer on the, uh, on the shutoffs, because obviously my washers are getting a little bit on the old side. Now for some of you out there, or probably most of you, I'm not sure what's gonna be the harder part, doing all that that we just did, or just getting underneath the sink and getting those shutoffs shut off, okay? You know what I'm talking about. And when you go to turn them back on, please make sure that they're not dripping, especially right there where the handles go into the shutoff itself, make sure that that's not dripping. We don't wanna have, you know, come back and find damage to the cabinets because, the, you know, because they started leaking on you. Other than that, I hope this helps you. I mean, this works like so much better and I think it's a simple thing to do and a very much needed thing to do for many kitchen faucets out there. So please take a moment, subscribe to the channel if you would, hit that bell for notifications, check out our website with hundreds of more videos organized really, really well, and there's another video for you guys to enjoy. You guys have a great one.